Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm talking about what drives you and gives you motivation. There are several theories that explain what drives your behavior. The leading motivational theory was developed by Abraham Maslow called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This hierarchy is illustrated as a pyramid with the most basic needs at the bottom of the pyramid and more advanced needs at the top. The idea is that our needs are progressive. Your lower level needs must be fulfilled before you're motivated to move to the next level. Here's the pyramid. At the bottom, you have physiological needs like the need for food, water, sleep, and shelter. The next level is the need for safety and self-preservation. This includes feeling emotionally stable, independent, and observing law and order. These two levels are your basic needs, and when these needs aren't met, you feel severely deprived. The next level on the pyramid is the need for affiliation and belonging. This is where you establish intimate relationships with family, friends, and romantic partners, or you connect to a group or a cause. So for example, even if you're someone who doesn't like being around people that much, or you have no friends, this need could still be fulfilled by having a parent who cares about you, or being a proud Jets fan, or a Catholic. In other words, this level includes affiliating with an entity bigger than the individual that allows you to feel like you belong to something and are not completely alone. The next step up on the pyramid is the need for status and self-esteem. With these needs, you're motivated to establish self-respect, recognition, and a mastery of something. These two levels are your psychological needs. When these needs aren't met, you can feel empty, detached, devalued, inferior, and undeserving. The last and the highest level is the need for self-actualization. This level is about personal growth. These are things like recognizing and fully utilizing your talents to the greatest benefit, feeling like your life and actions have meaning and create value, or experiencing contentment that you have a life that's well-lived. And you don't have to be 80 to feel like you've lived a good life. This is a relative judgment. At this level of self-assessment, you're looking at what you have been and are currently doing and how much that matters to you, even if you have more that you wanna do. In fact, having more to do or more to look forward to is a good place to be because then you still have other options to keep you growing. This last level is a self-fulfillment need. We started with basic, progress to psychological, then to self-fulfillment. Another way to group these needs is to consider the first four deficiency needs and the last one a growth need. Why does any of this matter? Because you can get stuck on one of these levels and feel deficient or unsatisfied and not know why. You don't have to meet your needs 100% at each level before you move on to the next one, but they need to be predominantly satisfied. For example, Let's say you're 35 and you don't have a life partner like you thought you would by your late 20s or even early 30s. And that may be a sore spot for you and make you feel discontent with where you are in your personal life, but it doesn't keep you from feeling accomplished professionally. Here's another way that this can play out. Your personality can make you prioritize certain needs over others. For example, according to the pyramid, the need for intimacy comes before the need to be accomplished and well-respected. But let's say you don't see relationships as important and focus more on being financially successful and a guru in your field. But even when you get to the point of making a lot of money and being promoted in your field, it still feels empty and you're not satisfied. You think it's because there's still another level that you haven't reached in your profession, or maybe you're in the wrong business and need to start with something else. In this hypothetical example, you never really get to the point of feeling satisfied with your level of accomplishment. Maybe it's because you skipped over the belonging and love needs. You're chasing money and recognition to fill the void of not being connected to someone or something that's meaningful to you, and the job or business just doesn't meet that intimacy need. This is a simple example of how recognizing your needs and taking an inventory of what you have and what's missing can help you get unstuck if you feel unfulfilled. According to Maslow, most people don't live in the self-actualization level, but instead hover around the belonging and status levels. He proposed that self-actualized people have certain characteristics, and here are seven of them. One, they are accepting of themselves and others and have a democratic worldview. And this is democratic in the general sense, like anti-authoritarian. Two, 
They embrace the unknown and can tolerate uncertainty. Three, they prioritize the journey over the destination, so the experience matters more than the outcome. Four, they establish deep relationships with a few people and need their privacy and alone time. Five, they are concerned with the welfare of humanity as a whole. Six, they have a non-hostile sense of humor. They can laugh at themselves, but they don't find humor in jokes that are hostile, which are jokes that make fun of other people. Or they don't find humor in jokes that are superior, which insult or demean people. Number seven, they're problem-focused instead of self-focused. Becoming self-actualized is a goal to aim for, but it not getting there doesn't mean you failed in life. It's more about being self-fulfilled by whatever means works for you. Watch this video for more on doing things that matter or how to find meaning and value in things as a way towards self-fulfillment, if you haven't already seen that video, and then watch this one on how being excessively positive is damaging to your self-esteem. Thanks for watching. See you next time.